Hang on a sec. Okay. Hey. I was just having a moment where I was like, wow, I saw that I was looking in my emails for the Zoom link and I was like, wait, I think you Zoom, you you texted me and then I copied it and emailed to myself. And I had this moment that was like, we've gotten so used to how quick email is, but it's kind of wild. Like one thing transits to another thing. Right. I was waiting for two seconds and I thought, whoa, just had one of those moments. <laughs> well, I'm glad to know that because I will email it to you from now on. Yeah, no, either way, I think my my thing was just kind of being blown away by how quick email is all of a sudden. Right, <laughs> right, because text is typically the second, right? Like, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. But both of them, I just, I think I'm having a moment of like marveling, like, We've gotten quite used to this over the last few decades. Yeah. And I remember picking up the phone in the house that had the cord that you couldn't get too far from. Right. We were tethered. Yeah. We were tethered. Yes. And like eager, like someone's calling. I know. Now it's like, who's calling? <laughs> Seriously. A hundred percent. Like. My phone, I don't know if I've shared this with you or not, but my phone is literally on DND. Unless I'm expecting a call, it's on DND 24 <laughs> 7. So people are like, oh, I don't ever want to text you late at night. I'm like, text me because I won't hear it. Like, you can text me at three in the morning. I won't be bothered because it's on. It, first of all, I mean, at night, I put it on airplane mode. Right. But D, like literally D and D, and I'm good. I I just because I I I'm so I am hyper distract, like aware and distracted, even by other people's alarms and alerts. And I'm like, it it kind of makes me a little, you know. Me too, oh. and I think that that might be part of the gift of being more highly sensitive because. Yeah. I have none of those dings or notifications on my laptop. I I think of my phone as my camera more often than I think of it as my phone. Okay. <laughs> like when I was like, oh my God, I've lost my camera, you know? <laughs> and I've worked really hard not to be tethered to any of it because like you, it it's an energy leak. It, it scatters my energy and it makes me kind of cranky. Yeah. So I marvel, you know, if I'm on something with someone and it's like the things are coming through and I'm thinking, I'm kind of glad I can't tolerate that. Yeah. 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 And, you know, when I'm, when I'm, 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 when I'm with myself, I don't want to be bothered. Like, I don't want to bother. I don't want to interrupt my time with myself. Right. Exactly. And when I'm with other people. I want them to have my full attention and vice versa. So I do have a couple of friends who are, I'm going to use the word addicted because I think most of the world and I, I am guilty too. We're all addicted to our phones on some level. And I will be in the middle of a conversation in the middle of speaking. I kid you not. And They'll get a phone call or a text or some alert will go off. I'll be right there. I'll, 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 I'll be with you in a minute to me. Oh, I know. Uh, yeah. And I really don't have, I don't have tolerance for it. I just don't. Because if I'm giving you my full attention and support and here for you, I expect the same in return. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, that's like the mutuality piece, right? Of a relationship. If I've, taking care of my parasympathetic parasympathetic nervous system, if I've t logged off everything, if I've decided to, and I think it is a gift, gift someone with my presence, my undivided attention with zero distractions, I, I guess it's an unspoken expectation because it's something I haven't really said to people. Yeah. So I'm kind of owning that too in the midst. Um, and when friends have done, and this was probably pre COVID, you know, you're having a drink with a friend somewhere yeah, and they're like, Oh, hold on. Text, text, text. But then it's like eight times or 12 times. And you're right. just like, I kind of feel deprioritized and that might be my own trigger. Nope. 
Mm. Nope, you're not. (laughs) (laughs) Nope, because you are being deprioritized for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And that Mm. that is how it feels. Yeah. Yeah, it feels. And and I guess the place, you know, I soften is like, oh, well, that's my values. And what I'm getting is it's not this person's values. Uh And then it just becomes, well, how much do I want to tolerate? Right. Yeah. And then, right, all of that. (laughs) And then what I like, I'm, I, as I'm in, as I'm sharing space with this person, I am already mentally reprioritizing. Ooh, them, them, the friendship. Yes, I am. Mm, so there's a real cost to it. Oh, there is a there is a serious cost to it, and and it's not like, and it's not as if, it's the it, it's not like when it happens the first time. Like right. I have I have a lot of grace, and I have a lot of, I I can expand really wide. And hold, you know, and be like, okay, so, you know, mm-hmm. if it happens on this visit or, you know what I mean? Like, but when it happens over and oh, like every time I visit with someone and it's not just once during the time I'm with them, but many times, nope. Yeah. They're no longer, <laughs> if, because I'm not a priority, I can't, I, I can't do that to myself to make them a priority. Hmm. Mm, you can't do that to yourself. I like that. Yeah, it's sort of like I'm not available to do that right. with someone. It's a boundary. Yeah. It's a really important boundary. Yeah. We've come, we've spoken about this on so many levels, being boundaried. Yes. To to be happy is not the right word, but to, to live a really fulfilling life, you have to yeah. be really boundaried. Absolutely. And I hold it too with um uh, it's, it's a different form of that, you know, where I don't want to be judgy and I am where right. someone's distracted by their environment. Right. So it's not like the texts and the dings and the, you know, what we traditionally think of as what's going on, but it's like the kid, the cat, the bird, the lawnmower, the, and it's like, oh man, like my, my judgment is like, can you wrangle yourself in a little bit? Like, because I do it. Yeah. And again, it's, a, it's an interesting question. Like, hmm, okay, our values don't align here. That's okay. Right. And then w- what level do I want to still prioritize this person or this group? Could be a group too, where you're like, I'm not feeling this now. Right. No. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think a friend years ago said something, I think when I like the for the first time lost a friend you know that that time where you're like oh my gosh I thought this was a forever person and it's like heartbreaking and you're grieving and all that stuff and I was I was the person who wanted to see people and wanted to connect and wanted to have a deepening friendship right and a lot of people were not being responsive for whatever for whatever reasons and she said try to mirror their commitment level which was like, you might as well have been talking to me like you're a Martian because I gave way more than I was getting and had never thought to be more measured like that. If anything, it felt counterinstinctive. It's like, wait, if they're not responding, let me give more. Let me ping more. I'm sure I annoyed a lot of people. Let me like reach out again. Let me check and see if we can do brunch this sun, you know? Yeah. Right. And so that was a huge pattern disruption for me to be like, why don't you mirror their level of commitment and see what happens? And a lot of those friends ended up orbiting out because when I wasn't doing all the labor, they weren't really available. They weren't mutual. Right. They're still cool people, just not my people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I've even, um, (laughs) I'm owning, I'm going to own my shit. I'm just going to, I'm owning it, right? This is what I'm doing. So I've had, and this is with, I feel like friends who are strong enough to handle my really severe direct, (laughs) 
You're right. Like it really can be severe sometimes. Sure. Right? My directness and and when I can be that way with someone, I know that they're my person or my people, right? So yeah. <clears throat> um, um this is someone that I've been friends with for, you know, quite quite a few years now. And we, you know, we're on Zoom a couple times a week and blah, blah, blah. And you know, you know how just intuitively you'll think about someone you're like, oh, I wonder how, wonder how they're doing. Or I, I feel like I want to check in and you don't, you kind of get busy and blah, 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 right? And so a couple of days had gone by and and we were uh what's the word? Um uh, uh in sync thinking about catching, just kind of checking in with each other over the few days that we hadn't, right? And so, and I'm typically the one who does reach out. Like, I'm like, I wonder how they're doing. I'm going to reach out, blah, blah, blah. And so this person said to me, when we did meet on Zoom, they said to me, you know, I thought about you <laughs> and I thought about reaching out. And I said, next time do. <laughs> And, you know, and my friend just laughed and smiled. And she, she, I will. I, I definitely will, you know. And so it wasn't taken offensively, but I was just like, do it. Because chances are, if you're thinking about me, I'm probably thinking about you, which mm -hmm. means we. It, it's an opportunity for us to just connect, even if it's for a few minutes. Yeah. Whatever that is, you know. Um, and I And I realized... <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing because I realize not everyone can handle that. Yeah. You know, but I'm always appreciating when someone can because I don't want to have to censor myself or right. like, oh, I'm saying the wrong thing. I'm done with that. I, I'm really done with it. Yeah. But I feel like those are the friendships that I know I trust. Right. And like we've done it before. It's figure outable. I've seen yeah. that the the bond is there and and i have a friend i'm thinking of as you were sharing this where there are times i just got like frustrated frumpy direct right it wasn't like skillful right it was like it was just like a bratty little sister a little bit right and she's older than me and it's just kind of come out in a way that's is unskilled it's kind of crunchy you know and she's been like okay like instead of um reacting to the to the tone she or the content even yeah she had enough empathy mm. to hear the need beneath the crunchy delivery yeah that that speaks volumes to me like she's like okay okay like instead of arguing about like oh but i did this and no the defensiveness wasn't there it was just like okay so what i think I'm hearing that you need is for me to be on time because it feels disrespectful for you to be sitting on zoom for 10 minutes like and it's like yeah and then you're like it just diffuses yeah the charge to be seen right yeah. all of that yeah. is so important you know yeah uh, yeah and I think too Podesta, I have such high standards for myself. Like my standards of me are really high. And, and I'm okay with that because I have really done a lot of work to not only get to those standards, but to maintain those standards. Mm -hmm. And then in turn, what happens is I have the same, I have the same like I hold my friend on some level, I can't say all the levels, but on some level, I hold my friends to the same standards because, because I want them to see me in, in that space and with those standards. And I want to be able to meet, meet them at that place, because this is where we really connect. I mean, this like talk about high vibrational energy and connection and and all of that there is there's just there's nothing like it there's nothing for in my, that i can even think of to compare it to you know 
totally yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and I think I know I don't know about you but for me it's like the older I've gotten that quantity of friends has transmuted into a quality of friends and I don't have and I'm happy to say this I like I don't have the tolerance for the surface convo I don't have the tolerance for like um I I just I don't know. I think I have enough friends. I'll put it this way. I think this is a better reframe. I have enough friends doing the deep, authentic relating that anything less does not feel worth my time. Yeah. I am with you on that. And it's no disrespect or shade to the people who, you know, want to talk about something gossipy or whatever. Right. I just notice I'm like, not an energetic match for me. And that's okay. Yeah. It's totally okay. Yeah. I noticed like here, you know, I, I came online. I was a little tired. I've been on Zoom a lot today. And I knew within minutes I would be replenished because of the conversation, the quality of it, the, the depth of it, um, that I would, you know, kind of like, I don't know, chirp back up. And so I use the opposite of that in conversations where I start to get depleted, kind of wanting to hit the escape hatch. Yeah. As a place not to bail, but a place to see if I can detour the convo to some place that would be of interest to me. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And see if someone's willing to play that way. Right. Yeah. Right. I've done that too. Yeah. I've, yeah, I have done that. I, um, but I like the way that you you uh, articulated that. But yeah, I've done that too because it doesn't take long for me to like want to <laughs> into my bed and be like good night because this because right. honestly I don't even know what to do with that. Like I don't I don't know where to go with it. I don't know what to do with it. And like you said, no judgment to whoever those that person is or people are, but you're going to lose. I mean, I can talk about weather for maybe 15 seconds, <laughs> right? I can talk about the news for maybe, maybe 15, tw maybe 20 seconds. And that's pushing it because mm -hmm. I'm not someone who watches the news anyway. So I really don't even know. And I don't, it, it, I feel like I've shared this before. I feel like if it's something that I need to know, I will know soon enough I don't need to watch news 24 seven. Exactly, I'm with you on that. Yeah, it will trickle in. It will trickle in, in some way, shape or form within within a few hours, I will get the information. So anyway, you know, um, yeah. And and speaking of on time, so I, <laughs> I grew up, I grew up in a military family. So we did, we did not have a, we didn't have a choice. Hmm. and and it wasn't even like a threat we knew that if we were like if we were going somewhere as a family we all had to be in the car at, and my father was just, either it was either my either the word came from my dad or my mom and they were like okay so this is when you need to be in the car and if you're not in the car you will be left behind and you were left behind like there was there was never a discussion you didn't get in trouble but you were let, literally left behind and so I and <laughs> and I can't like when I tell people they're like what what do you mean I'm like we were left behind like literally you just that was it you didn't go you weren't part of it oh, so it wasn't a false threat it, it was, was not no it wasn't a false threat and that's one of the things that I will say I feel like my father did a much better job within my mother just like no false threats he was like this is how it is um, but it wasn't like he was mean about it. He's just, he was very matter of fact. He's like, look, we, I know that it's going to take us 20 minutes to get there. This is the time we're going to get to get there. I, and he, you know, my parents like to be five, maybe five minutes early, mm -hmm. right. Which is perfectly understandable. So if we're going to, if we want to be five, if we want to be in the parking lot five, five minutes before the event, and it's going to take us 25, 20 minutes to get there this is when you need to be in the car so we can get to the parking lot and be, and get ourselves together and, and get into what, whatever it is, go, go to the event. And, um, 
And it just, it, it, it made sense to me. It was practical and it was common sense. And I'm like, yeah, I get that. And so, and it's also about respecting other people. Like when you show up and you show up on time, you're respecting them, your, their time and your time. Mm -hmm. It's a two way street. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, I mean, anyway, I'm not going to go on and on about it, but <laughs> I, I really do. I, I do prefer people who are on time. I do. Yeah. 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 And really stick to their word. Ooh, yeah, that's well, it creates trust, right? I mean, I think of the um, the bond building that comes from being able to speak authentically with somebody, and then also that place where they are being boundaried. Yeah, evokes trust for me. Uh -huh. Right, like when people have squishy boundaries, I it's like I can't explain it. It's like when you sniff something, and you're just like you're not trustworthy right that's my particular response to that it's like if your boundaries are so porous and squishy and someone can be 20 minutes late or say something not so great to you and all of it's squishy then i just wonder like is this person actually gonna stand up for themselves or speak up to me if i you know because it happens i'm human if i mess up if I uh, hurt them, whatever, like, am I going to hear about it? Uh -huh. Are we going to be able to like cough it up, clean it up? Yeah. Or is it just going to be this little thing? Right. And then I have to look at myself where I don't cough it up. Uh -huh. You know, yeah. I'm like not wanting to rock the boat or where like I shared before, like not having conflict with a, a particular group of friends being like, uh, do I want to try that with these people? because I actually don't have data. It's not like the friend that it's like, oh yeah, I could tell her that, you know, something's annoying me that she's doing. And she'd be like, okay, I hear uh -huh. you. I don't have that data. Uh -huh. I also noticed my own inauthenticity slash, is it worth it? Like the worth it quotient is always in my head. Right. You right. Know? Are these people I want to deepen it with? Is it worth it to go there? You know. Yeah. Will they have the hard conversation? Are they willing mm -hmm. to go the distance and and have the hard conversation? That that can be scary, but if we're all willing to do it mm -hmm. with an open heart and open mind, right? I, you know, I see only benefits to that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. Oh. <laughs> I just, I never know what's going to happen. Yeah. And then I'm like <laughs> so glad that we talk about this stuff because it's really important that not only for you and I, but also yeah. for anyone who's watching, like we can all do hard things. We really can. Um, we just, I don't want to say we just, but yeah, it takes trust. It takes vulnerability. It takes um, all of that. And, and then for the person on the other side of the conversation, for them to meet you, to meet me where I am. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, I love that. I'm curious. This has made me think of a, a like, a, not a, a, I guess it is a good question. I'm trying to think like, how do I format it? But like, what are three things that you do to prepare for a difficult conversation? Yeah. And what's the pregame for Heidi that supports you? And hopefully the convo itself. So I will say, and I don't know that if this is necessarily in any order. Um, I definitely either pray or meditate about it. And I get some really clear guidance. Um, I will talk it out loud with a friend just to kind of air it, to kind of, you know, mm -hmm voice it and get it out before, and, and also maybe get some feedback. Um, and I can think of two, I can think of three people who are really trusted, trusted individuals that I, you know, are go-tos for that. Um, and then I, I use the, so the pause is really important. Um, 
because if I'm in reactionary mode, it is not a pretty scene. It's not. And so I want to be, I, you know, so one of the reasons that I connect, I, I mean, I would hope it would be, I know it's obvious to you, but just for those who are listening, you know, the reason that I do meditate is really to connect with my higher power because whatever the heart, whatever the topic is of the heart conversation, I want, I want to be really clear that I'm coming from a, the cleanest space and the, and the most sacred space that I can be coming from. And I want that to be conveyed, whether or not it's spoken or not, but I want the energy at least to be conveyed to the other person. Yeah. Um, because there's no need for it to get messy or crunchy, your word, or Janet uses the word, what does she say? It's really funny. She uses the word rootchy, I think like, you know, so it all means kind of the same thing, right? Just unclear, kind of like mucky. Like when you, like when you step into a lake and you know, the mud comes up and then it settles, like when that mud comes up, you can't see, you have to wait for it to settle. And so the pause is about settling. And I'm like, I'm going to set, wait till the, wait till mm -hmm. the debris settles. And then I'm going to, then I'll, then when, when I feel like it's clear, when I'm clear. Yeah. 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 yeah the energy doesn't lie. So like that has to be pretty spot on, even if you're saying words, yeah. but the energy is like, yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah. And you can feel it. Oh my gosh. Like, I mean, I can feel it. The other person, I mean, it's so palpable when it's like that. Totally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. What about, thank you. What about you? What are your kind of three go-tos, if you will, if you are? <sighs> in that hmm. yeah I think my first go-to is a little shadow work to see where it's my stuff right my side of the street uh that includes like past stored baggage historical stuff right like maybe this person's mm -hmm. kicked up some dirt but that's only 10 percent. so I want to if I'm coming to them I want to be coming from that knowledge that they're not this other 90 percent charge that's historical uh -huh. so my work is to clean up that part so when I'm coming to them it's clean in that way right it's not dad stuff and ex-boyfriend stuff and like all this stuff and it's like it's like okay I've got to go sit with that that's one piece really getting clear what is ours and what is mine and only bringing ours to the table and I might own in there hey, you know, this hit some historical stuff for me. Wow. Just to own that it's, the charge isn't, you know, there's not a fault in it. Um, the second part for me is similar to you, is meditating, letting the muddy water settle, getting to a place where I'm holding the triggered part, but being an observer, oh. being a tender, attending to it. Right, it could be the hurt little girl. It could be that fired up woman. It could be a part of me that's like, hey, I'm pissed. So tending to her, right? Um, just tending to the feeling, letting go even of the story and being with the body, what's mm -hmm. rising in the body, uh -huh. right? Because we can be like, oh, I'm angry because of X, Y, and Z. But if you just go into like, I'm angry, I'm angry. Underneath that, I'm hurt. Underneath that, I feel judged, right? And and just staying with the sensations in the body. Uh -huh. And then the pregame to talk to somebody is reconnecting to the positives of our experience first, right? So just being like, oh, I remember when we took that trip. I remember them being there for me when my grandmother died, like whatever sets some balance to my view of them so that when I get on that call, I'm not coming from the, the 1% thing that they've upset me with, uh -huh. with a real balanced view of them as a friend. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
Wow. I'm so glad I asked. I, I love that. Yeah. yeah. So much to learn from our peers and yeah. Mm -hmm. All good stuff. And then permission to be messy all around, right? Permission to be messy. Like giving that to ourselves and giving it to the other person is, is a game changer. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can say in my intimate relationship with my partner, where before we wouldn't in real time, like reveal things, like I feel scared right now when I hear you say that or whatever, in us doing so, and it's in real time, it's in the kitchen, you know, eight in the morning, it's whatever. There's less jagged energy. Oh. There's just naming it. <sighs> I feel really defensive right now. I feel really frustrated by that comment. I am a little anxious that this, this, this little snarky comment has an iceberg underneath it. Can you tell me there's not, you know, can you tell me it's not a big thing, right? Whatever. Yeah. It's like this, this constant revealing, which is everything I've wanted. And that is so confronting to keep being like, oh, here's a layer here's a layer here's a layer and to reveal i mean i think that's i think of the word courage right it's like revealing your heart so much courage yeah yeah mm -hmm. mm. wow yeah um, yeah yeah so i gotta ask about your necklace because i've been admiring it this whole time and it looks really special and magical. So I'm wondering. It's a tree of life. Mm -hmm. And it's a jade. Stone is jade and it's a tree of Beautiful. life. Isn't wow. it? It's epic. I, yeah. Yeah. It's majestic, actually. That's, oh, that's thank important. you. My gosh. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Green is my favorite color. Like it's the day. Yeah. Is it not the day? The green, the day of green? Oh, I didn't even. <laughs> By the way, everyone. <laughs> That's hilarious. It is. <laughs> you like how I said it's the day of green? Like, I'm also not great with holidays. <laughs> And then I'm thinking of the meme that I sent you. Oh my God. Right. Oh, I, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Green is it's I, and you know, I can't really say there's one shade over another. I just love all greens. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, this is something I recently bought for myself, but I've been mm. eyeballing different trees of like, cause I just love the symbolic tree of life, like what it means. And and um and i wanted something not not typical because there are a lot of similar designs out there and and i was looking at this one i, I was like oh i've not seen anything like this so anyway it's i got beautiful it. hey does, does jade have like a i'm thinking of because i have crystals and stuff and they have like a property or a feeling tone when i hold them does jade have that for you wow um the short answer is yes. Uh, it, yeah, it, it does. Um, for me, there's something very, um, the word that's coming up is like root, like really uh, rooted and um, solid. Mm -hmm. I feel very like either if I'm holding, uh, you know, either a crystal or a jade stone or whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, Cause I often will, you know, um, there are a couple of crystals, minerals that I hold when I do a meditation. And one of them is a rose quartz mm -hmm. and the other is a jade. Um, and then there's a, a white one called, I think it's called CE -E cell cell cellotite or I, I can't. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That <laughs> yes. Um, and anyway, so I just feel, I do feel the energetic pull. 
oftentimes, you know, more so with the jade and the, and the rose quartz. Um, but yeah, I, anyway, to answer your question, yes, that's, that's what it, it does for me. Yeah. I love that. I asked because there are, there are stones and gem, you know, crystals and things that I'm like, ah, when I hold them and some of them like, boing, I'm awake. Personal. And I remember a friend having this really large, like this big heart shaped, I want to say it was a pyrite, that like fool's goldy thing. And when I held it, I literally had to put it down. I felt like I was on a roller coaster. I was like, whoa, yeah. no, I can't, I can't hold you. And so yeah. it, I've had that felt experience. So I've oh. been curious, like, A, am I imagining, right? But it doesn't feel like it because every single time it's consistent, like hematite, oh. I'm like, Oh, lapis, which is from the motherland. I feel like kind of queenly and like really grounded. But yeah. that pyrite man, it was like, I, I've never done cocaine, but to me, yeah. it was like, this might be what it feels like. Wow. Like too much, too fast. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. not subtle, you know? Right, right, right. Some of them are really not subtle at all. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i get that yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so it's just wild to me the con that concept of these beings i'm going to use the word term beings with their own personalities and their own it, energetic field and yeah, yeah. well they, and then not uh, everyone feels it you know not everyone no you're right not everyone does um but they're living minerals so they are living you know, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. So oh cool. my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> so you were going to, you were going to pull a question. Is that the question you were going to, oh, yay. So this is um, a brand called the and. Oh, I love the and. You do? Okay. Yeah, I'm very familiar with the and. Ah, yeah. So this one's the long-term couples edition. So we'll see how we do. Okay. Um, but we got these for Valentine's as a way to just like pick a card at the end of the evening and you yeah. Know. Okay, so I'm gonna shuffle. This is the first card that popped out. Okay, you ready? Are we supposed uh -huh. to gauge the 30 seconds at each other? That's part of the Feels about right. Yeah. Yeah. I love that you went right into it. <laughs> okay. So, what do I do that makes you feel heard? Hmm. So, a couple things. Um, you're always present with me and making great eye contact. I, you're never distracted. Again, presence is really important. And, um, and when you're, when you are, when you're looking at me, I, I just sense this very kind of your faith, your energy is very open and loving mm -hmm. and inviting. And, um, there was one more thing I wanted to add to that. So, um, oh, when you reflect back, I, I, I don't even know what to say about it. It's just so beautiful and, and, um, and I appreciate it because you use words that I would not have thought of or come up with or a perspective. Often your perspective is like very, something that I hadn't heard before. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah so yeah thank you yeah so you're 
sweet to receive, but it's e even sweeter to know that I can provide that and that we can create this. Yeah. Hmm. All right, should I answer it too? Yeah, I want you to answer the question too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. so what do I, what do you do that makes me feel heard? So let me ask that question. Okay. What do I do that makes you feel heard? Hmm. Well, I will start off as well with presence, deeply presenced, undistracted here. And it's not just here, it's like here for me is the feeling I get you are here for me right now and for us that feels big too um and i feel just deeply accepted for whatever i bring i i feel the the lack of judgment right like the like absence of it and a real just soft acceptance of whatever may come and a shared humanity in that right? Where you will also bring, oh yeah, I felt that way too, or oh yeah, I can relate. That means a lot to me. It helps normalize what I can sometimes think is like my weirdness to like, oh, shared humanity. We all have these pieces. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And that you do have a, what's the right word? For me, like, I feel like I have a big sister in you. That's the gift you are for me. So I feel like I'm also getting like the wisdom, some things you say and reflect back helps to, it's like such a great leveler where I might be like, ooh, and you're like, uh-huh. And it's this, yeah, great stabilizer and leveler of what life is the messiness and the crunchiness and the beauty. So I feel like I get to kind of just rest, you know, near like a big sister in that way. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'm so touched. Oh. Mm -hmm. Feels good to soak that up, just even. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of love coming at me. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Yeah. Thanks for remembering that too. Sure. Yeah. 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 It also makes me think of how we can expand our capacity to receive more love by having those kind of conversations. Yeah. At least practice the muscle. Yeah, it, it is a muscle. It is a muscle that needs to be exercised and stretched and expanded and contracted and, and all of it because most of us kind of shy away from it or run, you know, in another direction. And <laughs> it's not an easy thing, you know, but when we do allow, oh my God, the gift that we give each other and ourselves in that is so beautiful and can like, it just can't be reproduced. Mm -hmm. You know, there's just nothing like it. Yeah. yeah. It's a deepening of sorts, right? It's a taking a moment to deepen. <clears throat> like I know we come, we show up here every week <clears throat> and sometimes more than once a week because we receive yeah. and benefit from each other. And to hear it spoken, it's a whole other thing. It is a whole other thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we shouldn't assume that we all kind of have it, have it all uh, but we know it all without it being explicitly named sometimes right in our friendships and our relationships right. even with a coworker, like hey I, I remember having a coworker and being like 
I really appreciate that when I come in in the morning, you're here a little early, we get to talk a little bit and like we brew the coffee together, whatever. Uh -huh. like that's a lovely start to my day before the 9 a.m. like laptop opens, you know, right. this was back right. in the day. But it was something I looked forward to. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Enough to show up a little early to have that yeah. quiet time before the hustle and bustle. Yeah maybe just even inviting people to like think of somebody in their world that brightens up their day and share it just yeah. as a sweet invitation or challenge instead of assuming they know. Right, right. Yeah, so maybe when we want to take a moment now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to do this because, you know, at the end of our, so I want to share with the audience. Um, thank you for subscribing. For those of you who are subscribing, thank you. We are just, we're over the moon. <laughs> we, we just do, we do this every week because we enjoy each other's company and, and we wanted to put this out there for those of us who wanted to hear us and maybe also know that this could be possible for you. Um, and so in the chat, if you want to introduce yourself, because we, I don't know who the subscribers are. I think we have 24. Is that what we have? I don't know. <laughs> I was well, as surprised as you. <laughs> I know. We don't even know. We don't even know how many we have. But we're grateful. We're like we're just, we're like, yay, there someone's listening, right? Um, so for anyway, so what I was gonna say is for those of you who want to introduce yourselves in the chat if you if you'd like. Um and yeah, let us know if you have someone in your life who, you know, you meet with, you know, like Foresta was saying, maybe a few minutes before the day starts at work, um, let you know that you are worthy to them because you put a smile on their face, just even a hello, like a hello with a smile can mean the world to someone, can really be healing to someone. So. If you want to, please share that with us because we would love to hear that. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have anything to add? Yeah, I think just that we appreciate you and we hope that this serves and supports and helps you in, in some way that even one part of the conversation lands in a way that validates you, encourages you, empowers you, heals you, you know, whatever touches you, but that, um, what we're enjoying here in our friendship that in some way it's it's modeling and it's inspiring deeper dives with the people you you love in your life yeah yeah and the courage that that requires like i i want to lift that up that it's yeah. for sure yeah because you know i mean this was not our relationship was not you know created mm -hmm. overnight i mean it's taken time and nurturing and showing up and being present and vulnerability and trust um and so we we know this we know this about humanity that it's not easy sometimes and so um it does take a lot of courage to to open yourself up to someone to share the way that we are sharing here and like Foresta was saying we are modeling um at least we hope we're modeling for you that's our intention <laughs> Um, because our hearts are in the right place. Yeah. We really want this for everyone because, you know, I'm, I'm tired of saying in this pandemic, but even before the pandemic, were people really paying attention and putting, putting intention into their relationships? I don't know. I hope so. But if we're going to learn anything from this time, from this long, very long season, um, can it be? that we are all humans experiencing having our own experience of humanity and what that means to us as individuals as friends as couples as groups or whatever um yeah to just kind of let our guards down and be with each other in a real and authentic way yeah yeah even yeah and i and i appreciate you naming that this was something we cultivated, you know, this, this wasn't overnight for anyone who's got the fantasy that it should just click and be easy. And, you know, if it's not happening, that it can't be nurtured. Cause I do believe in the law of the farm, you know, like you both 
work in that soil. You both plant, you both do the work and that's what makes it mutual and, and really um, healthy, like a healthy connection. Yeah, thank you. That feels good. Yeah, yeah. So here we are. <laughs> <laughs> the end of our hour almost yeah but i think this is a good place to to end feels yeah. good yeah it feels yeah. right well good night everyone and um we'll see you again next week thank you for joining us thank you all right i gotta stop